This video is provided as supplementary material for courses taught at Howard Community College. And in this video, I'm going to talk about two special right triangles. So here's the first one. I've drawn a right triangle here. I've labeled the right angle, the 90 degree angle. And the other two angles are 45 degree angles. So this is sometimes called a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. And sometimes it's called an isosceles right triangle. It's an isosceles triangle because I've got two angles that are congruent. And it's also a right triangle. Since it's isosceles, I also know that these two legs, the sides next to the right angle, are going to be congruent as well. They'll have the same length. So let's say that the length of one of the legs is x. That means I automatically know the length of the other leg because they're both the same length. So that's x as well. Let's find the length of the hypotenuse. So we've got the Pythagorean theorem. And that tells us that the hypotenuse, which is usually called c, is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, where a and b are the two legs. So using the information we have here, we could just say that c equals the square root of x squared plus x squared since the two legs both have a length of x. So that's going to be the same as the square root of 2x squared. And I can simplify that as just x times the square root of 2. So I'll label this hypotenuse as x times the square root of 2. Now, we can take the relationship that we've got here between the length of a leg and the length of the hypotenuse, and use this to solve specific problems. So if you were told, for instance, that the leg was 15 meters, then you would know that the hypotenuse, instead of x times the square root of 2, would be 15 times the square root of 2 meters. Whatever you told the leg is, the hypotenuse is going to be that same length times the square root of 2. Okay, so let's see what happens if you're given the hypotenuse and you want to find the leg. So let's say we're told the hypotenuse is 5, five inches. So 5 inches is going to be the same as x times the square root of 2, and we want to find out what x is. Oops, square root of 2. So to solve this equation, 5 equals x times the square root of 2, I'll just divide both sides of the equation by the square root of 2. On the right side of the equation, those square roots will cancel. And I just have x equals 5 over the square root of 2. Now, if you're given this as a problem, you may be told not to leave a radical sign in the denominator. If that's the case, what we're going to do is a process called rationalizing the denominator. And for this problem, all it means is multiplying the fraction that we have, 5 over the square root of 2, by the fraction the square root of 2 over the square root of 2, which is just equal to 1. So multiplying those two fractions, I'll multiply across. And that means that I'll have, for my numerator, 5 times the square root of 2. And the denominator will just be the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which equals 2. OK? Now, let's go on to the other kind of right triangle that I want to talk about. This right triangle, besides having a 90 degree angle, has a 30 degree and a 60 degree angle. So this is sometimes called a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. To understand this, let's realize that this is just one half of an equilateral triangle. An equilateral triangle has three sides that are the same length and three angles that are congruent. They're all 60 degrees. If we cut that equilateral triangle in half, one of those 30 degree triangles, one of those 60 degree angles, gets cut in half and it becomes the 30 degree angle. Okay, now. If we had this equilateral triangle and one of the sides had a length of x, 
then I would know that all of the sides, I'm sorry, had a length of 2x. I would know that all of the sides had a length of 2x. So the base has a length of 2x. And one half the base, the part that's part of the original triangle, the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, one half of the base would have a length of just x. Okay, so let me get rid of that extra half that I've drawn in and get back to our original triangle, the 30, 60, 90 triangle. And what I know about a triangle like this is if one of the legs has a length of x, then the hypotenuse has a length of 2x. So let's find the length of the other leg. One of the ways we use the Pythagorean theorem when we want to find the length of the leg is we'll say that a leg, we'll label a leg as side A. And that means that A is going to equal the square root of the hypotenuse squared, or c squared, minus the other leg squared, or b squared. So using the lengths that we have here, this long leg is going to equal the square root of the hypotenuse squared, which is 2x, that whole thing, squared, minus b squared. We're saying b is x minus x squared. Okay, so I want to square 2x. So I'm going to have the square root of 4x squared minus x squared. And that's just going to equal the square root of 3x squared. And I can simplify that to x times the square root of 3. Okay, so that means if the short leg has a length of x, the longer leg has a length of x times the square root of 3. Now, just as we saw with the isosceles right triangle, if I know the length of that shorter leg, so if I'm given a problem where I'm told the shorter leg is 7 centimeters long, then I know that the longer leg is going to be 7 times the square root of 3 centimeters long. Whatever the shorter leg is, I just plug that number in before the square root of 3. I multiply that number by the square root of 3. And for the, for the hypotenuse, I just double the number. Okay, so let's see what happens if we know the length of the longer leg. So let's say that we know that this long leg is 7 yards. So that means the longer leg, I'm going to make that equal to x times the square root of 3. And I'll find out what x is, the length of the shorter leg. So I'll take this equation, 7 equals x times the square root of 3. I'll solve for x by dividing both sides by the square root of 3. The square roots on the right will cancel. And x is going to equal 7 over the square root of 3. And once again, I can rationalize this. I can get rid of the radical sign in the denominator by multiplying by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. And that's going to mean that multiplying across, I get 7 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is just 3. Okay? And it would also mean that I knew the length of the hypotenuse, which would be twice as much as the length of that short leg. That would be 14 times the square root of 3 over 3. Okay? So I hope this helps. Take care. I'll see you next time.